In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up the Belego Neuromuscular Electrical Stimulation Unit and then how to apply it on your forearm to do a finger extension and finger flexion. So this is the Belego. Um, that front panel is where you can set all of your parameters. The top part is the dials to turning up the amplitude and intensity. You also need to turn the dial just a little bit to actually turn it on and then once it's on you can open up that front panel and that's where you're going to be setting your parameters so you first press the mode and that's going to change your mode there's three different modes that you can use there's constant synchronous and then alternate if you're using one channel i usually do synchronous you could do alternate since you're not using the other channel as well it'd be the same thing and then you go ahead and you press set, and that's going to change your ramp on off, and then your pulse width and rate. And so you choose what you want. If I'm using this for functional e-stim, so I'm combining it with a task, I will do my on off uh, typically five seconds on, five seconds off with one second ramp. That way I can maximize the amount of repetitions that I'm getting, getting in. Because that's the whole purpose is that you want to get in many, many, many reps to promote neuroplasticity for motor recovery. So I'm going through here and I'm changing those all to five seconds on, five seconds off, one second ramp. And then for pulse width, for the Belego, the maximal pulse width is 300. So I usually leave it at that. Um, 250, 300, 350 is typical for the upper extremity stroke rehab. And then the pulse rate can go up to 50 or 55 on this unit. Um, and for upper extremity stroke rehab, it's usually around 35. So I'm going to... Plug in my channel. It's off now. Connect my electrodes. And then we're going to start with looking and working on finger extension. I will place the electrodes on the dorsum of my forearm to get that finger extension. The Belego uses only symmetrical biphasic, so it does not matter where your red and your black lead is. So now that my electrodes are on and everything's connected, I'll turn the dial to turn it on. All my parameters are set to the same thing that it was when I last used it. The CH, that's for channel, that will flash when my e -stim is on. So that's when I will actually, you know, turn up the intensity. When the e -stim is off, I'm not going to turn it up because I want to make sure I am getting just the right amount of e-stem intensity that I need to create the movement that I want. So as you can see, I'm getting pretty good finger extension. So it's right where I want that amplitude to be. Now, you know, keep in mind that I do not have a neurological condition or an orthopedic injury, so I get really good movement. A lot of the time, especially with our stroke patients who have some spasticity, you won't get full finger extension because we're only stimulating those extrinsic extensors. And so you'll get you know, wrist extension and MP extension, but not necessarily at the PIP and DIP. So you want the amplitude, you know, high enough that you can get your hand open as much as you can to grab the item that you want. So the whole point of, you know, e-stem from a stroke rehab standpoint is 
to improve motor recovery. So if you combined functional e-stim with an actual task, say of grasp and release, you know, functional items, that will promote more neuroplasticity, that will promote more reorganization of the brain and neural connections. So I just showed you there that, you know, you can work on grabbing keys or whatever item that you want to either in preparation to grasp them or to have the hand open up to release them. So now I'm going to add channel two and we're going to work not just those extensors to open up the hand, but also our flexors to work on finger flexion or actual grasping. And this is for your patients who don't have you know, any active movement of their hand. So make sure when you're doing putting on your electrodes for flexion that one of them is really close to that wrist crease and then the other electrode is pretty proximal to the origin point. We're trying to just target those the muscle bellies of the finger flexors and necessarily you know not trying to get to the muscle bellies that do just wrist movement. So we'll turn on the Belego Eastim again. It was on synchronous mode and we need to change that. It needs to now be on alternate mode as we want the Eastim, the channels to alternate. So from going to flexors to extensors and back and forth because now we are stimming the antagonist and the agonist. So I'm going to start setting up my amplitude for my flexors. And it's just kind of really fine-tuning for the Belego. You know, if you look at the top dial, it just goes to 8. And it does not correspond with the actual milliamps. Well, I mean it does, but you you can't see it on the dial. And so just a little bit of turning the dial um, can have a significant... <laughs> effect. So make sure that you're going slow, especially when you get to a point where the patient can actually feel the stem just a little bit more and you should be able to get the muscle contraction. Personally, on me, I get a good response between like three, four, four and a half, depending on how new my electrodes are. Okay, so I set to the amplitude that I want. I'm getting good finger extension. I'm getting good finger flexion. It's tolerable. It's not too, too painful. So now I'm going to do my grasp and release activity again. So when my extensors are on, that's why I'm going to prepare to grasp the keys. And then when my flexors are on, that's when I'm going to pick my keys up. Extensors back on, that's when I'm going to release the keys. And then bring it back in preparation. Flexors, pick them back up. And you can really make this activity more complicated, right? Like if your patient has elbow and shoulder movement or you have a mobile arm support, getting that arm to move just a little bit more than just you know, picking up and setting your keys down, maybe carrying them across the table, raising it up, setting them on a shelf, into a container, whatever you want. Just the whole point is having that arm move, building into a functional activity that's meaningful to your patient, and getting maximal of repetitions in to promote that neuroplasticity. 
All right, and then when you, uh, you know, run out of time or you're done, you'll just turn the dials to turn it back off, and then you'll just connect everything.